Welcome back, everybody. Congratulations, Noble Nerd, on the giveaway. So go ahead and message Solo in our Discord and shout out to him also for helping with my gifts. Uh, okay, so we are here with our guests. I will I'll let them take it away. I, I don't I don't have it up. Is is Diane on my right? They're both to your right. Diane's in the middle. Okay, so Diane, go first. All right, so go ahead and do your little intro thing and where they can find you and all that sort of stuff. Cool. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do your job, Ronan. Uh, hi, my name is Diane Hall. You can find me at the Pretty DM on Instagram. Sometimes free blogging uh, the casual Campbell on Twitter and re blogging Fable 42 on Twitter. And you can find me here on Mondays DMing for Legends of Shaw Gall. You can find me here Wednesdays playing Kiwin. Uh, and apparently I ride dragons now. <laughs> you can find me here sometimes on Fridays playing Anastasia uh, in Wizards of Ugador and here on Saturdays playing Petra the Butcheress for Vault 42. Oh, me? Yeah. Yes, you. <laughs> uh, my name is Taryn Hackett. You can catch me on Instagram because it's the only social media I want to deal with right now. Someday I'll grow up and use Twitter. Uh, you can catch me at Valrook, V-A-L-R-O-U-K. I'm a general crafty human. I love cats and other things. I make dice and I'm a DM and stuff. And you can catch me here every Monday on Legends of Shao Gal as the coolest drunken monk, yes. Jenks. Uh, you can also catch me later today as Rookazel, the auntie wizard who is not going to kill everybody. That's true. It's I actually not- didn't. I didn't preface that i guess uh it is That's... wizards wizards is after this and we are all three on it so we are we are yeah. so you should definitely stay and watch you should. yes absolutely Big um, i mean you should regardless but i mean we're on it so yeah it's gonna it's be a great time it's going to be a good episode it is uh <laughs> is uh okay so and that's actually kind of kind of how i broke up the questions a little bit so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about shaw gall and then we'll talk uh, a little bit about wizards hey can With... i say something real quick sure you said the caridron correct the first time sweet no that's also, all it matters you butchered every other name it's yeah, like that checks out. Yeah. and dragos dragos whatever <laughs> um yeah uh that's fine i'm never gonna get any names right uh ever it's okay even I like tried to do the pronunciation thing for you yep doesn't help that is surprisingly doesn't help at all okay. um okay. well i'm not gonna stop giving you crap about it that's fine like solo is like known for using like one syllable easy and it, like when i hear them you still fuck them up yours, though no that's what I, that's where i was going with that i still mess them up like they're hard as hell to do um but <laughs> I don't know. What it, it, it's it's weird when you when you read it. Like if I hear it and say it, I'm like, oh yeah, those are easy words. And then I look down, I'm like, oh, I have no idea what that says. To be fair, the caridron is like a, a Scottish Gaelic word, or or it was based off a Scottish Gaelic word. So I understand, it's but weird. I did try to put spelling. the pronunciation on there right, for you. You did, you did. I I, you know, appreciate it or whatever. So, Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Please. Okay. So go, that's what we'll go do. We'll, forward. <laughs> We'll do we'll do that. We'll we'll talk about Shawgall and then and then get into some of the wizard stuff. All right. So first question is for Diane's. This works out as far as the way you guys are set up on screen here. So uh, and this one actually comes from uh, Ferrick. So this is our fan generated question here. Uh, it says DMing for Jordan has its curiosities in every campaign, and Rex takes sure. this to a different level. Absolutely. What is, what is your approach and what advice would you give to DMs running for a PC with a God complex? Mm-hmm. He seems um, like, a, he doesn't. Jordan, Rex seems like a very difficult character to DM for, for what he's like trying to do. I mean, I guess, sure. Like just thinking about it, it might be difficult, but at the end of the day, it's, it's their game. Like they're the one right. who's playing it. So I want to make sure that you all have characters like you enjoy. And if your character has a God complex and wants to become a God, then fantastic. Um, let's, let's like try and make that work for you. I mean, it is my world and I will alter it if I see it going in a direction I don't want it to go. But I, 
I, mean, I want you to have fun. So, so th there's a fine line between, I mean, cause every, every character is going to want to achieve their goal. Right. There's, and there's gotta be a, some sort of medium between achieving your goal and, and breaking your, your world, you know? Like, right. But the goals that I see Rex achieving by level 20, I don't think that's going to wreck my world. I think it's going to add to yeah, my yeah, world. I guess that's what um, I'm asking you. Which, you know, I will put the bumpers up when I need to kind of push you in, in a, in a direction that, you know, like lightly suggests, okay, well you want to become a God, but like, you know, like you need to go this way to do it based right. on the story that I have for the season. So I actually, I don't find it that difficult to DM for Jordan and to DM Jordan as Rex. I really don't because he's yeah. very open to my thoughts and my feedback. And I know that he isn't going to break my game with the character because other people could have this character and totally ruin everything and no one would have fun and it would be sure. awful. But Jordan's not like that. So so it really comes down to that DM player communication and trust, you know? I could see that for sure. Yeah. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. I'm just got another question here. Oh, I have that question already. <laughs> um, okay, so this next one is for Jinx. Um, so, okay, so this last episode, I don't know how long this has been coming, but particularly this last episode, she kind of evolved into a bit of a caretaker. Um, do you know, like, with, with between Frizz and, and Rex, do you know what specifically sparked that if, if it was one particular thing? And then is this, like, a role she would enjoy playing because it seems sort of counterintuitive to her it's okay so there's a reason it's coming out with specifically frizz and rex at this point like i said before rex reminds her of somebody uh that mm -hmm. was very important to her so naturally she's she's already she just cares um and then she's beginning to care more about him Granted, I think last night when he was, or the last time when he was walking away, I'm pretty sure Jinx was about to just like deck him. Um, but Frizz there, she noticed, I mean, again, she figured out pretty quickly, like he was grieving loss, um, which is something she definitely feels drawn to. Um, mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was like, she she's aware that she is like, she's been a screw up, that she has screwed up and like, she knows what that has done and like being around these people that care seemingly care about her and have done things to try to help her a little bit mm -hmm. um which is more than she's seen in a long time she's kind of like hey you're starting that you should stop that because you don't want to it's more of like a please don't be like i was it's not even so much like trying to be a caretaker as much as it is, is like i see you doing something that's gonna really fucking hurt you should mm. stop before you can't stop um but yeah like she's, 100 <laughs> she's a walking psa yeah like she's <laughs> like please please don't be like i was be smart and use your brain and stuff you don't want to be a drunken asshole like um but that was specific like she she saw that and, and frizz thus far has been the one of don't separate yourself and go do stupid stuff and don't you know don't he's been the 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 consistent line and that was gone uh suddenly and she didn't like that at all and then like in an, and in another way that this old almost old jinx started coming out um is that the courage when we're around and it reminded her of somebody that she kind of used to be a long friggin time ago um so right. it just it the, that combination of feeling at home and then seeing people that she cared about start to fall apart kind of we'll see like uh it was a, an interesting turn for her i feel like once upon a time that was her um, okay. so we'll see if that comes back yeah i think it added a uh a, a significant layer to that character um not not that she's not layer but just enough uh, it, it caught me off guard uh, when i was watching that I was like oh okay cool uh and i kind of had a thought that it may have something to do with sort of her feeling of mm -hmm home or, or whatever she was gaining from you know those people um mm -hmm. i was just curious to know about it yeah and and that'll that more of that'll come out like sure depending on how sober we stay 
<laughs> right. This last episode was just so great for, I think every character had like a really great yeah. growth moment and I just was eating it up. It was amazing. It was. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think every, every single one of them had, had a moment. Um, Spicy Rex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is like, I did yeah. not know that was coming, by the way. <laughs> no, I, don't know. I didn't know that part was coming. Like, I knew about the, the multi-classing and whatever, but. So, uh, sort of off of that, because this is this was a pickup episode from the previous. It was it was sort of a split episode. Um, the next question is for Diane. Do you, how do you DM a battle that's sort of split over, in this case, it was multiple weeks? Like, is it hard to reestablish that sort of tension or do you just jump right in and hope that hey hope they jump right in with you or how does that work exactly um it was stuck it, there. it's i feel like it's definitely a challenge um but i knew that this battle was going to take a while like with the curry drink coming in like i knew that it was kind of be a uh like a two-parter mm -hmm. so i knew that like they would get rid of the undead possibly the elemental but like whatever yeah. <laughs> throw away elemental <laughs> whatever um <laughs> uh he did some the elemental did some damage so i guess it, sure it's, it's, he sort of started yeah. it off too uh yeah so i knew that they were going to get through the undead and then it was going to be like hardcore on the necromancer and then that was going <laughs> to <laughs> don't make that face Ronan. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so. and that the curry drone were going to come so I, I knew I knew and based on when they got to the like I just knew that it was going to be a two-parter so um well I think what ha like <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move past it uh, I think the thing that I, I, I think would help and you did a really good job of it um, oh, thank you is like exactly where it ended right so you had yeah the blah blah blahs coming up right Her but they weren't we exactly what i just said i don't you know sure. turn it turn up the headphones um anyway they were coming up uh but they weren't there yet mm -hmm. you had half the group embroiled in this whatever you know this these tentacles or whatever so yeah. half of them were captured half of them weren't so the tension was built in I think right out of the gate, like everyone was like, oh, we're right. We're in, we're in a lot of danger. I remember right, we're this. dying. Yeah. <laughs> I recall. Yeah. And and we may or may not have allies coming to help. So right. I think that worked out really well. Um, cool. Uh, okay. So back to sort of Rex's moment uh, shared with Jinx. Um, Jinx, initially, I was kind of curious about this because you kind of just left this on the floor and it didn't get picked back up. So Jinx seemed a bit coy about the info that she had on the Traveler. Mm -hmm. Was that something she withheld on purpose or was it like she she just was like, oh, you never asked. Uh, um, well, she, he didn't. That, uh, Jinx no, it's that, fair. It's fair. That, that's that's kind of okay. So it's kind of who Jinx is a little bit too. Like if you don't ask her, like uh, she doesn't volunteer information very often. Uh, and that's a defense mechanism. But also, like, she didn't know that that's what they were called. Um... She actually had no idea what they're... She just has known them as, like, travelers, and she's hung out with them, and she knows where they're from. Uh, they're why she knows a bit about the traveler. Uh, Jinx is not fond of any deity right now. Uh, there have sure. been a couple in her past. Um, but, yeah, she knows a bit. Like, and, and she did briefly mention to him, like, hey, I don't think the traveler whispers to people that are buddy. It doesn't sound right. Um because oh, she did know that. that's true yeah he I did know that, that. Yeah. uh but like he didn't explicitly say what do you know about the traveler that's right so that's all she's not and she's not gonna well she's also not gonna advertise like i know this much about these things like if they started asking like her rex stuff, would do <laughs> yeah um surprisingly he didn't go so what do you know that's true it was uh just um but that, that's part mm -hmm. of it is she didn't know that that's what they were called uh they i mean She's not like, she's just there ha hanging out and having a good time with them, getting to know them. So sure, right, and that's that's another thing is they're known by the rest of the world as the Corridren. They don't really call themselves the Corridren. They're just family, you know. Right. They're not. So if you were hanging and, and out with I, them and in I, their town, then they yeah. And I and I did mention there. that in the thing that they Ravika I think mentioned specifically, like you know we're not introducing ourselves as the Corridren, but people do refer to us as the Corridren, which. 
if I remember when I named them, it is a Scottish Gaelic word for traveler. Oh, okay. Cool. And they all worship the traveler? They are all followers of the traveler. Um, the traveler is um, not a, he's not a part of the uh, absolute 13. So openly worshiping him is not legal, but they don't actually live in the kingdom. They don't live anywhere. They travel around. They live wherever they camp that night is where they live. They don't have a origin gotcha. spot. They're from all over. So that actually does lead me into my next question. Um, nice. So, that's so we, how you do a segue. That's right. So we have heard a bit about various gods like tidbits here and there um i mean you don't have to go like into a, a you know dissertation or anything but can you kind of give us a brief overview of the pantheon like as the players would understand it so um, you have so you have the what did you call them you have the the absolute 13 absolute 13 okay so Those, that is that is the um the grind kingdoms pantheon that they have outlined as being the deities you are allowed to worship all right so the and official the official deities gotcha um and they've taken it further for reasons um that you cannot worship any other deities okay these are the only deities that you are uh, allowed to worship um and then there's the bounded six which are the explicitly Banned deities. They are like evil aligned deities. Okay. Uh, Asmodeus, um, Bane, Ball. Um, I can't remember all the others, but sure. Um, so so evil aligned deities. Any deity that does not fall in the absolute or the bounded six, um, they're not necessarily banned, but they're not legal either. So if you're found okay. worshiping any one on the bounded six, you're executed. Okay. No questions asked. You're Dope. done. You die. Um, if you're found worshiping the Raven Queen or the Traveler, you might be sentenced to prison. You might okay. be sentenced to death um, or some other sort of punishment or whatever. Gotcha. Um, so not necessarily death. Just sort of depends on the transgression. Right. Um, gotcha. The Zyalok dynasty, they are not restricted to the Absolute or the Bounded Six or, or anyone, but they do mostly worship the Raven Queen based on their capital city, um, Fithich. Okay. Uh, the Queen of Fithich, um, she is a devout follower of the Raven Queen. I don't know if we've heard much about them. I don't remember hearing But her they will be going into the dynasty to get to the glacier. So. Ooh. Cool. Very, very excited for them to go into this this area. And that was the one that like Rex, <laughs> like I think Jordan meta, but as Rex was like, it's not Zylock, right? Like as long as it's not Zylock. Right. So the Zylock dynasty um was at war with the Grind Kingdom during the land wars. And uh so so there's definitely tension between the dynasty and the kingdom. Gotcha. Um yeah. Uh, as far as like Mithyal, which is like the neutral zone where the dwarves and the gnomes. <laughs> Did I call <laughs> Mithril? <laughs> that you, yeah. Um, the, the dwarves and the gnomes come from, and it's mostly dwarves and gnomes. Mm -hmm. they, um, they worship the dwarvish pantheon and the gnomish pantheon. Okay, cool. So, um, and uh, those are just sort of, those are right out of the D and D stuff. Yeah, right out, okay, cool. right out of your your player handbook or whatever. Gotcha. Um, and then like where Jinx is from, they worship whoever they wish to worship. So if you're an elf, you might worship the elvish pantheon. If you're um, an orc, you might worship the orcish pantheon. Like there's they are not bound to the the other territories that have restrictions. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. part of why Jinx is so confused at some of that just kind of keeps her yap shut. Yeah. Uh, would they, would they, like, would Jinx's people know that there is a place where, like, only you can worship these? Like, would you, would Jinx have been confused by that? Like, when you, when Jinx, you got in there? I mean, it's not unheard of for them to know. It just depends on, like, how much you know about the Grind Kingdom. If you, if you know about the Grind Kingdom and, and you've probably would, she probably would have heard about, the um 
the War of the Ancients, which is why there is the restrictions on worship within the kingdom, gotcha. because I think everyone knows this by now. Um, Carson Aelos was around during the War of the Ancients 700 and some odd years ago. So... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, so um back to jinx i got one for you from ferrix as well so when rex went further into the <laughs> handy dandy creepy cave i like that uh with the hand pillar jinx insisted on going with him what is the worst thing that she thought could have happened like why was she so insistent upon going um he would take one hit and be knocked out <laughs> that's fair <laughs> that's actually to think about that like so you were around this was after he got knocked out by sound um so that's fair no uh, yeah. that's honestly the experience from the night before of like if she hadn't been there what would have happened um and that's kind of where she was in that moment too of like yeah there's a shadow thing going with you and what then we have to run after you no and then i mean she this is the guy that's been hanging out behind a tool shed while we've been getting our asses handed to us. That's fair. Yeah, no, I'm going to go with him and make sure he doesn't get killed immediately. And I think by that point, you, everyone was aware of the whispers too. So you knew yeah. what he was going towards. So well, well, and he had explained that other night before that the whisper things were doing stuff when we were hanging oh, out that's by right. the fire. That's right. Um, and I mean, she likes him. She wants to make sure he's okay. Like, and Jinx is relatively stealthy. Like, you know, she there's a reason she hung back a bit. But like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't expect him to be as. Uh, in, she definitely did not expect him to be as impetuous as he was. Like, yeah, going further in. That was uh, new. I'm a, it's she's because a little, he hit puberty. Yeah, <laughs> Jinx is definitely like, sitting there at the edge, like. I like right. the one episode that he hit puberty. Jordan was also forced to shave. Like, <laughs> did have his beard. I'm just saying, right now, oh. I have like the second best beard in the whole network. That's fair. It goes Eric, then you. Yeah, because <laughs> everyone else is shaving theirs off. That's true. Uh, I'm keeping mine. Um, cool. Sorry, Ronan. You keep getting bumped down. Um, That's true. That's all right. This, this one matches my hair. As long as I'm in the top five. And by that, I mean as long as I'm beating solo. Um, let's see. Next question is for. Or, how much you wow. Oh yeah, you are in the show next week, aren't you? Yeah. I <laughs> oh, okay. Um, oh, I I had asked uh, Chris something about this last week or whenever I don't know when it was two weeks ago, and I wanted to ask you sort of on your take. So his like inventions and things, like how much is that worked out on the DM side with him, like? Like the phone, um, for instance, like, you know, he, did you give him full he, leeway or he like messages me sometimes like right before or sometimes during the episode, like <laughs> on his idea. And I'm I usually just like glance it over. And I mean, usually I'm just like, yeah, like, let's go with it. Um, like, especially if it's so in the moment. I'm more right. inclined to say yes, let's let's go for it, and then I'll pull it back if I need to later on. That's what I was saying. If it breaks um, something, then you can just yeah, kind of tweak and, it or whatever. And again, like I'm the type of DM where it's it's your game, right? Like I want to make sure you guys are all having fun. So I'll just make the baddies batter. Yeah, right. You know, like same. That's my idea. I'm just like, okay, let's add 50 more hit points. Let's add another dice on that damage. Let's up the AC. I mean, like, I I don't look at stat blocks anymore. I glance at them. I'm like, okay, cool. That's what they do. Sweet. Let me roll these dice because that's, that's what I do. Sure. Give them a legendary action. I don't frequently track hit points. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't actually. The the short time I was a DM, I was like, I'll just kill him when it feels right. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, I'm a terrible DM. Right. I'm glad I'm I don't like, do it anymore. I but. want it to be long enough that everyone feels like they've got good shots on them, that they do the cool things that they want to do with their characters, and long enough that I can use cool abilities yeah. on them that they feel like they were getting through a hard creature sure. or a hard opponent you know so so if we see a lot of ones in the beginning we just know it's gonna it's gonna take a while <laughs> everybody's gotta get their shots up i mean like i 
I'm not going to pull too many punches, sure. but you know, <laughs> I just want to make sure everyone has a good time and feels like they're, they're being challenged. Sure. No, I get that for sure. Um, all right, cool. Transition. I, know I answered like Next. three questions. No, so. it's fine. No, that works out really well. I was curious because he, that's kind of what he said, but I was just kind of curious if yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to like, if there's some train of thought that you do for your approval or just, yeah, let's do that and we'll fix it later. Uh, that's which is usually my go-to. I mean, I think that's the easiest yes! way to do it. And then yeah. later I'm like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 95 degrees. I don't know. Maybe we <laughs> 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 um, so Yeah. Uh, okay. So, all right. Jinx. Uh, Jinx. We, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but this is, uh, should have been a follow-up question to that previous one. So Jinx seemed excited to have a piece of her past uh, return. What did the caravan mean to her uh specifically did she i mean everything that we know about her right now would suggest a very tumultuous past but when they came around it was like well maybe it wasn't like so bad like it, oh, seemed it was like... it was it was gnarly but um that was one of the bright spots of her of the last like nine years of jinx's life those people were one of the bright spots right um and i mean also like she's been away from home for a little like that area and just been traveling around that whole time so i mean it's not like she's only come across them one time right it's just it, it's a taste of home when she's been feeling like going to places she's never gone before and whole new countries and cities and like being in situations like a ball where she's not really comfortable right. and then like also sobering up a bit and then seeing a taste of home when you're in a more cleared state of mind is also a little bit different and like also like these are some people that she's starting to care about right and then like hey here's a taste of my home like these are this is something that that i really enjoyed back home and so like she that's kind of one of like part of the reason she was like so insistent as well is like no this is a chance for like you guys kept talking about food that you guys could cook and like all of the stuff that you guys mm. used to do. Well, here's for like the random friggin' chance in the whole world that you <laughs> right. guys actually get here's my culture. Yeah, to get a taste of like this is this is who I am a little bit. Um, so yeah, like for her it's it's kind of it's I'm I'm curious like next run being around them and then continuing to try to do better. Like, yeah, she's having a drink here and there, but it's not like it was. I'm sure. curious because of the things that she's trying to bury and run away from, how that's going to compile with all of the trauma. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, and I'll, we'll see next time. But yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, it was, it was absolutely grounding and just like, yeah, it's supposed to, it was like this encounter thing and this, you know, camping opportunity, but it was just like, Oh, freaking a, like this has been really creepy and shadow stuff and whistles yeah, right. and eyeballs and Oh, here's home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was enough to pick her, like pick her spirits up for sure. Like, it reminded me of like in public school where they had the 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 where you bring your parents to meet the teacher or whatever and like they get to see all your school work so like you run around in the classroom going this was me i did this and i did this over here <laughs> just it was very uh you want an acknowledgement or something like that so oh, yeah Almost absolutely like i planned this <laughs> uh okay so many shadows so many shadows i had so to bring in some sort of and i mean it was a plot device for for the whole party to have that moment because you, they were about to go into the cave and uh, yeah um you thought it was also, dark before but also for rex right because of the whole traveler thing but yeah right that was fun okay cool so i want to get into some wizards quests we got like 10 minutes left so i want to see how many of these i can get through oh, uh, there's no. a couple ones i know there's a couple ones from chat uh, uh this first one's for diane full exclosure it comes from april april uh, it's the Anna. Uh, do My you think? Do you think your sister would let? Do you think your sister would let you die or kill you to save the school? Do you think your sister? Like, does Anna think that Damn. Kai? <laughs> yeah. Like, does Anna, Anna yes. does Anna think that Kai would what kill me you, or what? Yeah. Do you think your sister, Kai, would let you die or kill you to save the school? Well, I sure hope she wouldn't. That would have to be opposite. I don't know. Correct that in chat if I'm wrong, April. That makes more sense the opposite way, right? Would you kill Kai to save the school? I think she wants to know if... if I'm not killing if, Kai. Well, no, she wants to know like if Diane thinks that Kai would save Anna 
or would if, if it it basically it's like oh, does she think boss. kai would kill anna to save the school i would hope not do you think either sister would kill either one of you guys to save the school that's a good question actually do, do would either sister kill the other oh. anna would 100 percent not kill kai um probably i mean she looks up to her her big sister like so much and i know that they've had like this like um like friendly rivalry kind of situation going on in the past year or two or year and a half or however long the timeline has been since they came to school but she would never kill her that's her sister and um, april april clarify if do you think kai your sister do you think your sister would put anna down if anna was a threat to the school like would would kai kill you? oh do you think kai would kill you if you were a threat to the school <laughs> oh, <laughs> the really the said it all. <laughs> like if anna was a threat yeah if anna became a threat to the school do you, do you think her? one of your adversaries would become kai I mean, I, again, I would still hope that we would be able to come together and end up on the same side. Sure. Okay. But <laughs> moving on. I, I don't. That's such a hard. Sure. Thing to that one's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, I got the next one. Yep. Rook, if it came down to choosing Lily or Thegan to die, who would you choose? Well, this is between the rock and the hard place. Um. Before prom? But who's the rock and who's the hard place? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I would. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, before prom, Thagan. Um, after prom, Die? No, I would... I think before prom, Rook probably still would have saved you. Oh, okay. I would have saved Thagan. After prom... Probably Lily... <laughs> I hate saying this to Ronan's face. I have to not look at Ronan. Uh, but also, most of the time in Rook's mind, like, Thagan doesn't need saving. Like, that's... No, this of... is, the question is, who would you choose to die? If I had to kill one of you. Yeah, let's say you gotta kill. <laughs> but... It's the question, that's damn it. It's hard, though. <laughs> He's so getting he's like, getting really into that question. I know. Like, I I'm need to the, know. It's like I'm in between them and I don't want to be. I am absolutely not taking notes. <sighs> Whatever. I think that's some well, I think honestly, um that's some of Rick's duality right now. Uh we're sure. gonna see we are gonna see that today. That was similar uh, to a question I had. That's why I, it was phrased much better uh yeah. than, than way I, I but what is rook's emotional state after interactions with thegan and lily but that's a oh, much better question to ask yeah it's um it is there's a there is a very rough divide in rook uh she's same becoming, she's becoming very angry i have that effect <laughs> yes um she's becoming very angry um at the world around her and the situation going on and she cares very 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 deeply um for lily without giving away too much from prom and she sees a few bright spots in the world uh that she would want to save regardless like i said after prom like i, I don't think rook could let lily die um like that's the weak the the weakened emotional state of rook right now is like holy crap i care about somebody like in a way that i didn't think i could sure um i'd like to ask a question oh no go for it vegan Jesus. since Ooh. we're since we're in this love triangle oh right now, no <laughs> and that's all the time we have for today thank you for joining us <laughs> oh yeah guess what i'm the one who have to stop the stream <laughs> um if vegan had to choose between three yep. different things okay <laughs> rook anna Becoming a god. <laughs> uh, Rook knows the answer. No, but the real question is: is is uh, Anna or Rook? Um, 
Uh, Anna, for sure. I think that's an easy question uh, for different reasons uh, that many of which haven't been, not many, a few of which have not been fully divulged yet. Um, the first question, though, is interesting. Again, I feel like, yeah, no, that like Brooke knows that, Taryn knows that. Yeah, it's it's Anna. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason, like, like I said, it's more like Taryn doesn't want to tell Ronan but Rook would never kill Lily or be responsible for her death in any way, shape, or form. Right. Taryn feels bad looking at her bro and is like, I'm so sorry, but yeah, you dying. <laughs> if it comes yeah. down to so, that. I have so many thoughts right now. Yeah. Before prom, Anna felt so divided on her feelings and her thoughts and what was happening in the future. But she feels way more aligned on what she wants now. Uh, ditto, I think. Uh, not not so much that he he hit, Deegan's path didn't change after prom. It like that is the one freaking consistent thing about Deegan is it's consistent. <laughs> yeah. But he now has a path to but that. So I that's I different. would I would say like Anna was at like a a fork in the road with like many directions. And didn't know which way to go. But based on conversations that happened at prom, she now, is no, she now knows what direction she wants to yeah, go. It's now. so See, crazy. There's so many things that are going to come out of this prom. that Some of them are going to be like, oh my gosh. And then some are going to be like, I freaking knew it. No, <laughs> Just... Rook, is, Rook was on a highway and she detoured <laughs> uh, because there was this really beautiful hill covered with flowers and awesomeness and so she took the, she took the scenic route and it's the longer one um and she is preparing the napalm for that hill okay well, next question and she's um going down the road <laughs> so she's like going down the road and she sees the exit and she's starting to get really upset that she sees the like the on-ramp back onto the Aww. highway that's where rook is right die lily right. um okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna follow that question up real hard. Uh, so she let's see here. Rook, no no no. What was I gonna ask? Damn it, where'd it go? Rook oh. and Anna are now best friends. Yes. Anna, this was the question yes. I'm gonna follow up with. That does mean she's made her position pretty clear with Thegan on wanting to learn as much as she can at the school. But mm -hmm. are there circumstances, hypothetical, in which she would feel the need to leave? Like if the library fucking burned down, she would leave. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, I guess theoretically, sure, but it would have to be pretty freaking epic and like totally life changing and world changing for her to make that decision. But. Sure. She has made it very clear that she wants to stay in school. Um, yeah, that's actually something that I mean may come out t tonight a little bit. But yeah, in, our, in our letters back and forth, we like yeah. met and know that. So we've communicated back and forth. On yeah, and yeah. Out, Anna so. and Vegan have communicated via letters, um, you know, from Ravens and Coming Through Shadows. Very romantic and macabre. Um, it's true. But yeah. At this moment, she doesn't see a situation where she would leave school. Yeah. Um, of course, if the school blew up and there were no books to read, Maybe. Sure. that might be a situation where she would go, hmm, where is a library that I can go and finish my studies? Sure. Hmm. Cough, shadow castle, cough, cough. <laughs> it's like, look what I <laughs> You know, but of course, I don't, I don't foresee that future, but we will see. So, all right, just real quick to both you guys, and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, without I any major talking. spoilers, I know, but then we get to go do the wizard. Thing oh yeah, I guess I guess that is true. Um, so, uh, without spoiling anything, Taryn, we'll start with you. What was your favorite part about prom? Wow, um, right. favorite part um was... character wise because uh, obviously the the favorite part was like hanging out with everybody yeah that, yeah, was, that a was a lot of fun that was a stupid blast um i think uh and y'all will see it eventually i think my favorite part as far as character development and interaction was um like 
one of the last scenes with um, Rook and Lily, and you will see it when you watch the prom episode. But it was, uh, it was great. It it's was so good, good stuff. It's it so was good. so good. Um, it just, like I said, it's a side of Rook that wasn't in her mind wasn't supposed to be there, but it is. Cool. For for me, it was Anna danced with four individuals during prom. Um, the first being Thegan, where she had to lead because he did not take dance lessons with Khalees, even though she mentioned that he should in a letter that I Never told wrote. him I sent. <laughs> I wrote it. I told him. It was a verbal letter that I didn't send beforehand, but told them beforehand. <laughs> um, it's true. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, and then every other dance after that, she mentioned to them how they were such a good dancer, way better than they did, and for them to not tell him. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah, totally didn't spend all um, she also that that's true. Did. <laughs> she did. also had a conversation with uh, Hemian, which um, I think definitely um, furthered her development, her character development, and a conversation with Mardek that I was super uh, stoked about, and I'm stoked for everyone to see too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I um. Had a lot of conversations because uh, obviously the dance was, I don't even tertiary. It, even, it wasn't even secondary to Thegan. Um, ensuring that you had a decent time or Anna had a decent time. That was, that was you know, uh, the reason for him being there, I guess. But his personal reasons were much deeper. And so it was very conversation heavy for me. Um, there were a couple conversations that I can't really talk about uh, that were good. Um, and one of which was a one where like a lot of things that I have discussed and alluded to and a bunch of things just we've, I, I find like Thegan had a conversation where he spoke, spoke like nor like a, a, more than a single word and stuff like that. Um, so I think that that was his favorite moment is is that that sort of again pa the, the the goal has never changed from day one the path is clear and apparent now and so that's that's exciting so um oh hey. yes okay and i, I have do have to mention this so I, I won't spoil it but but lizzie and thegan have a conversation you can share it okay cool that is essentially it, it started out as thegan kind of giving his blessing uh with the relationship in in his own sort of weird way and it ended with them basically threatening to kill each other but it was weird because it was like them finding some sort of weird common ground based off of general threats to to murder one another uh so it was a very very cool conversation so it's just a i mean i don't know because i was only part of a you know some of them but there were so many conversations and i cannot wait for everyone to, oh, to it, see it was it was absolutely fantastic and yeah. my favorite moment is by far the casual um selfies which none <laughs> of you got to experience but you will absolutely experience later. yeah i was in the i was doing a scene while he was doing that so i did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. and if Let you guys don't know what i'm referring to uh and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tease Jordan about this forever, but Jordan was sure. in the waiting room and didn't realize it was being recorded and he was fixing his wig and it was beautiful. Picking selfies, um, fixing well, his it, wig. And for those of you that don't know, like for the prom, like when they were recording a scene, the rest of us were out of it. So we, yeah, don't, we don't know, know everything says, that yeah. everybody said and did. Yeah. So I some just of it now learned that she danced with four us. people. It was all by yeah. design, ladies and gentlemen. And I will definitely talk about it in the episode later. Speaking of, um, so we're going to go ahead segue. and yep, probably go get ready for that. It starts uh, in 30 minutes. Does it start at yes. six? Okay. It starts at six. All right. So it starts at six. Give us a couple of minutes to get ready and go ahead and enter raffle into the uh, Between Show giveaway. And we will see you soon. Come watch Rick. Mm -hmm.